I'm Jim Alexander with The Real Talker. Luis, Ed, I'm happy to, to have your time today. So um, I don't know where you guys are at, but I know you have a cool background. <laughs> Thanks, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Where are you at currently? I am in London and Luis is on mute. Luis. Yes, and... Luis. <laughs> Sorry. There you are. <laughs> I just saw that. Sorry, Louise. That I should have said. Okay. Hi, Jim. It's nice to meet you. You too. I'm, I'm glad to have your attention. Uh, uh, I was just caught like in a snowstorm. It's like I'm in Chicago and it is coming down. It's like a whiteout of snow. So. Well, I'm in I'm in sunny LA. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Rub it in. You know, that's where I exactly would want to be right now. I haven't been there in a while, but uh, that's nice. Enjoy the weather there. Love sunny California. Oh yeah, can't go wrong with it. I don't know what the hell I watched, but I enjoyed every second of it because it was so damn entertaining uh, all around this film. Uh, Louise, I mean, this is coming from your mind. You wrote it, directed it. What were you thinking initially that inspired you to come up with this? Because I thought it was like a, a giant theatrical play with these grand monologues and <laughs> the fanciest of lighting and the best of 80s music together. Tell me how you initially came up with this concept because I think it's just it's just so out there and it's genius in so many ways. Um, thank you so much. I, I've just always really loved the femme fatale genre. And you know, whether it's Jean Tierney and Leave Her to Heaven or Gloria Swanson in Sunset Boulevard or Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct or Barbara Stanwyck in Double Indemnity, there's just so many uh, brilliant femme fatale movies out there. And I wanted to write one that uh, was a comedy. <laughs> and you succeed in every way. You know, and I, I don't know how you pay attention. She's like, a, she's like a force in this movie. Like you can't look away from her because she's just like completely lights up the skin, like every scene uh, with not only the, the, the performance and just like taking complete ownership, but Jeez, Louise, I, I don't know uh, how stony you could look in every scene and the outfits. I, I'm almost wondering, too. I'm going to get back to you on that in a second, <laughs> how you pick them all Listen, out. But... I had a talented hair and makeup uh, team. <laughs> I don't wake up looking like that. <laughs> you are right now, but Ed, how, how distracting. I mean, for an actor, you're a hell of an actor not to be distracted by all that. So how did you pull it off? Uh, there was a lot going on in this movie. You know, we had the lights. We had, uh, you know, we were playing the songs on set. We had fight scenes, we had dance scenes, we had all the, the like fast banter that was going on between the characters. And yeah, a wonderful uh, actor in Louise and director, you know, and writer. So, I mean, it was an absolute pleasure for me to uh, to embark on this, uh, this journey, you know, and I remember when we were first discussing the movie and I was watching Louise, how excited and passionate she was about this, that I just thought, you know, this is gonna be a great ride for me and, um, it was, you know, I mean, it was a chance for me to play um, a, a different character and kind of let loose with a bit of the comedy. And um, I really, really enjoyed it, man. And I hope people kind of get that feeling when they watch the film. No doubt. Louise, how did you pick out all those outfits? I mean, you, you mentioned you had a team behind you, but there, there had to have been a process behind all that because you just had so many changes of, <laughs> uh, of clothing and looks and everything, hair. I mean, that's part of the character in a sense. Uh, right. in its I mean, it's, it's literally implausible that she could change the outfits that fast. And that's what makes this, you know, um, a, a, a farcical anti-plot, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I wanted it to be, you know, almost completely ludicrous, but I know I, I, I love movies that have fabulous fashion. Um, I was inspired by seeing a lot of these great uh, costumes in movies like A Simple Favor. And um, I really wanted to have fun with it because, you know, she is, she's a completely nuts character. And uh, so she, she, she just is uh, always in different outfits. It was, yeah, it was a lot of, um, it was, it was a lot of work pulling all, pulling all the outfits together, but uh, it was, it was great fun too. Ed, were you like surprised? Like every scene, it's like a mystery. Like you don't know what she's gonna come out looking at, or or what. Definitely. I mean, even the character says. I mean, he says that is another striking ensemble. You know, so it's like he's as surprised as we all are, and um, it's a massive part of the comedy. You know, it's like, wait a minute. I think at first you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. She had five minutes to go and change, and then you're like, no, no, no. There's no way she had any time to change. So 
you know, it, the fashion not only is it like amazing to to look at, but it plays just it's a it's a it's a comedy character in itself. You know. Mm -hmm. Luis, there's so much of the dialogue. I was so impressed with it. I didn't know like how you literally could have pulled off like these, these in a sense, monologues that are so fast paced too, uh, especially when you're listing off different things and the fourth wall opens up. Uh, tell me how you kind of approach that and with the uh, with just not only with the characters constantly. So there's a lot of physicality and there's all movement and she's moving, but just the words in itself. How do you kind of pull that off? Cause I was really impressed. I felt like there was like three performances in one really. <laughs> well, I, I was inspired by movies like his girl Friday, where there's really speedy banter back and forth. And I, I really liked, um, you know, Patrick Bateman in American psycho. Mm -hmm. He's so intelligent, you know, and I wanted um, to make Catherine almost comically clever and um, I, I just love, you know, I, and also the movie is an homage to cinema and to movies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of buried treasure in the film, references to movies like Wall Street, to Footloose, to Flashdance. Um, and, you know, like even Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that was the, the first fourth wall breakage I ever saw. And I'm just such a huge John Hughes fan. So um, I wanted people to feel that uh, the, the film is very self-aware. You know, we're all having, we're all having fun and, and uh, the character is self-aware and I as the writer director, I'm very self-aware. Um, in some ways, I think Catherine is like a, a slight parody and caricature uh, of, the, of what the media, you know, always paints me as. Um, which is funny because I couldn't be a more different person from that person, but I, I wanted to have fun with it and, and, and make a satire. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of dancing in there, man. And you, you have that one scene in that robe, you're going all over a place. Uh, <laughs> was it natural to you? I mean, is this something you do in your, when you're home alone or something like that? I mean, there was a little bit of risky business there. I kind of remember thought of that when, when you did that oh. scene, but um, how did that come about, man? Because you just went for it like a pro and knocked it out of the park. Well, my mom will tell you a story of me being about six years old, wearing a pair of her stockings and dancing around the kitchen. So <laughs> it's definitely been, uh, I've been uh, keeping it in for, for a while and I was super, uh, super excited and happy to be kind of letting loose in, with this performance, you know. But man, I like that's what this film is, you know. It's about letting out your, you know, your your inner spirit, I guess, and um and and, and going for it. And no, it was just it was just wonderful, man. I mean, look, I'm not a pro dancer. I just kind of gave it a go, and uh, you know, it's probably some really clever editing in there that made me look a bit better than I actually am. But rubbish, uh, you're a talented dancer. But, uh, and I I had risky business in mind when I wrote that scene. Oh, really? Interesting. I I, I picked it up. I picked it up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Luis, how would you rank his dancing and his moves? I mean, you had some really impressive ones yourself, but what, what did you think of that? I mean, this looks kind of like a natural there. I mean, I think that that uh, ad uh, in that red robe is going to go down as like one of the sexiest things anybody has <laughs> ever seen. Because I got to tell you, when I show the movie to my girlfriends, they all just melt when they see you know their gorgeous Ed Westwick dancing around and he's so talented and he's so funny and um I, I just I mean how do you not fall in love with this character you know he's just he's just he's everything yeah if you can excuse the uh the criminal part you know <laughs> right exactly you know almost an ideal guy until he goes away with with your <laughs> necklaces and car you know? <laughs> Yeah. But damn, he looked good in those necklaces, hey? <laughs> he did. He pulled it off, actually. I, you know, it was so fitting on you, actually, Ed, that I didn't even know they were on you. <laughs> <in some scene. laughs> to lose weight for the rings, you know? <laughs> Luis, I, I, since you, this is movie was kind of in your mind, and was, was Ed on top of the list? Like, where did you, when you were putting the movie together in your mind, in a sense, and writing it before you, you even casting, um, because this movie is different without Ed, I feel. And, and if you were recast, I couldn't imagine this movie if it wasn't you in, in the role, too. Um, but I think if, if any of you were changed, this is a whole different movie. Um, how? Tell me about Ed's casting and, and when did you think of him in a process? And I mean, I couldn't think of anyone else now after watching. Right. I mean, so I, I didn't have any particular actor in mind when I wrote it because I kind of wrote it 
quickly. I was inspired. I, I, I wrote it like I just was, I sort of went down the rabbit hole for a couple of weeks to write this thing. And then when we thought about casting, I mean, Ed was literally at the tippy top of the list. Um, I wanted, uh, you know, to find someone who could play Tyler that that has like a formidable presence and strength and, you know, a gravitas because, you know, Catherine's a bit of an intimidating gal and, you know, it's going to have to be someone pretty special to to have her not want to chop them up and um, eat them for dinner. And uh, um, So, I mean, Ed was the dream. And so when he came aboard, I mean, we all we were an all female production company. We were all just sounding hmm. ah, out. <laughs> it worked, right? Ed, tell me. What's your favorite thing about Luis after getting to work with her? Uh, just even not only as a performer and writer and director, but even as a person, uh, what did you kind of learn about her from this experience? Did you guys spend so much time on screen? So, you know, I'm imagine off screen too, uh, to bring that chemistry together. What, what's something about her that really stood out to you? She's absolutely fearless, you know, and um, that's what you need when you're making a movie. You need to have your vision and believe in it and go after it. Um, and I think Luis has done that with this film and I think, um, you know, throughout our life, you know, with, uh, you know, going to law, law school and everything, you know, so uh, these are great qualities to have as a person, but along with that, she's very kind and, uh, and, and um, creates an atmosphere on set where you can feel safe. And as an actor, that's very important, um, especially in a movie like this or on a project like this, where, you know, we didn't have six months to shoot the film, you know, we were kind of, you know, every second counted. Um, so she pulled together a really great group of people who were focused on the job, um, but felt happy um, and excited to be part of it and relaxed, you know. So really, really kind of was our was our leader and champion who um, who created that kind of atmosphere. Um, so that's what I learned. It was it was a great time. Luis, what's about Ed? Any dirt maybe on him that you learn about him or anything you can share about him as a person and individual uh, that you kind of learn through through spending time with him? Listen, I know this man. He likes a cup of tea and a ginger snap. So. Oh, OK. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so he, um, you know, he is so funny. I mean, I could never have have written Tyler as funny as Ed made him. And, mm -hmm. and he's, he's that funny in real life. He's so kind, he's so down to earth. And he was, you know, a great co-pilot on, on this film. I, I couldn't have made it without him. That's, that's well said right there. That's, I think that, that now I know why you guys work together so well. <laughs> I think that's a lot, the junior snaps too, counting in that too. <laughs> You know, actually, here's here's a funny little piece of trivia. Yeah, we both had the same first word. Wow. Okay, that's real. Then that makes it very. <laughs> Which we discovered during filming. Um, you know, we we discovered that during filming, and so we were like, "Whoa, that's crazy." Ed, you're a Chelsea fan. They're they're playing Tottenham, I believe, right about now. I'm curious, man. What the hell happened with this team this year? Uh, uh, you know, they're closer to Leeds in the standings than they are in the top four. You know, it's it's crazy. I mean, I follow the team because of Pulisic and Frank Lampard being a big, you know, fan of his during his playing career. Did they? Did they? What's going on with this team from your perspective? You're you're a big fan. I want to hear that because I don't know what's going on there. I mean, it's hard to say, right? I mean, maybe uh, I don't know. I mean. It's, you can't say that Frank would have lost the dressing room or anything like that. You know, the guy's a legend. And uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to play hard for Frank Lampard? And that rhymes. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, this is the funny thing about football, you know. Um, it just it just, it just, just didn't kick off, you know, uh, for us. I mean, at the start, it was okay. But start of the season, decent run. But yeah, it just fell apart. But this is football, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, not having fans in the stand... Uh, has really affected some teams, you know. Uh, a team like Man United have been able to do well. Um, Liverpool was solid before, but you know Chelsea maybe we're really, really missing that, and it's such a big, important part. So I don't know. You know, it's disappointing, but you know we'll be back, and I'm sure Frank Lampard will be back as well. Oh, that's good. Uh, Luis, finally, I wanted to ask you, you're, you're a big proponent. I read about animals, which is like, it automatically struck with me because I'm like a big animal uh, rights uh, activist. And you are? I love that. 
And I'm actually looking to adopt right now, either a cat or a bunny, because my place won't allow me a dog. But any oh. suggestions I, I want to hear? I love that um, oh, I read no. off that. It's, it's um, you know, what I learned uh, when I was living in Washington, D.C., working with like these incredible organizations like mm -hmm. Social Compassion and Legislation and the White Coat Waste Project. You know, um, it's it, there's just, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of animal testing that goes on in this country that doesn't yep. need to. Uh, you know, we spent uh, nine, uh, what is it, nine, twenty billion dollars, I think, per year on animal testing. And so, my big dream is for the FDA to stop requiring all drug companies to test on animals. Um, that would be great. And obviously, I really want to encourage everybody: please adopt, don't shop. There are thousands and thousands of homeless animals that desperately need. A loving home and just don't don't buy don't buy dogs <laughs> and don't buy cats and don't buy bunnies please rescue mm -hmm. oh my god you, you're, you're speaking this to the choir because i'm always like filling out petitions on on animal testing which is so cruel and unnecessary in so many ways and and of course adoption you know so many uh, loving pets out there that need homes so well said i just wanted maybe, to ask you about it so maybe you can come uh, with me and lobby on capitol hill <laughs> i'd be down for it i'm i've been already filling out the 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 petitions for a long time so that's my thing that's awesome thank so you. lovely to hear that thank you guys Jim, so much thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk to me this was a lot of fun I really enjoyed the film and performances thank you so much jim bye bye guys bye, bye.